In the early decades of Formula One, Grand Prix racing hosted many non-championship races during a season. These were races that were run exactly like a Formula One race, but crucially did not hand out points, even though some races were considered just as prestigious as actual F1 races. The Silverstone International Trophy, for example, was, according to Sterling Moss, more prestigious than the British Grand Prix due to the International Trophy offering more prize money. Despite this, non-championship races have since been forgotten by the history books. But what if these races did count towards the championship? Would we see any different champions? This video would be too long if I covered every season that had non-championship races, so for this video we will just cover the 1980s, the last decade to hold true non-championship races. The 90s would see the F1 Indoor Trophy, but this was more of a tournament than a straightforward F1 race, so they would be a lot more difficult to work with. So let's look at the first non-championship race of the 80s which was the 1980 Spanish Grand Prix. This race was supposed to be part of the championship, however, the race was removed from the calendar due to the ongoing FISA FOCA war. The Formula One Constructors Association, or FOCA for short, which was led by Bernie Eccleston, represented independent teams such as Williams, McLaren and Brabham. They were unhappy at the way FISA, which represented the manufacturer teams, were handling commercial aspects of the sport, including the distribution of revenue to the competing teams. Tensions had been escalating throughout the season and climaxed heading into the Spanish Grand Prix weekend where FISA decided to suspend the racing licenses of 15 FOCA drivers. This led to the FOCA teams threatening to withdraw from the race. The Spanish GP organizers saw how much their race was in jeopardy and eventually bypassed the FIA, FISA and the Spanish Motorsport Federation to allow the FOCA teams to race. FISA were furious, and this along with the fact that the race could easily be deemed illegal, led the FISA teams such as Ferrari and Renault to withdraw from the weekend. Interestingly, a similar situation occurred at the 1982 San Marino Grand Prix, but this time it was the FOCA teams who would not participate in the race. Despite only having a 14-car grid, this race would end up counting for points. The 1980 Spanish Grand Prix was a race of attrition. There were multiple collisions and reliability issues, leading to only six cars finishing the race. The race would be won by eventual 1980 F1 champion Alan Jones, who would personally count this as a race win despite the record books not doing so. None of the other top drivers would score points due to either retiring or withdrawing from the race. So had the 1980 Spanish Grand Prix counted towards the championship, it wouldn't have made a major difference to the championship apart from Alan Jones winning the championship a race earlier than he did in reality. The only other major beneficiaries would be Jock and Mass who would go from 17th to 8th in the final standings, courtesy of his only podium of the season being in Spain. Next up is the 1981 South African Grand Prix, which was originally supposed to be the opening round of the season. But just like the Spanish Grand Prix the year prior, the FISA FOCA war had other ideas. Once again tensions had reached a boiling point when FISA pushed to change the date of the South African Grand Prix. FOCA chairman Bernie Ecclestone, who coincidentally owned the Kilami circuit, refused to move the date. Many threats were made in the bill to this race, including Bernie Eccleston and Max Mosley proposing that FOCA form their own breakaway championship with the South African Grand Prix being the season opener. In the end, like the 1980 Spanish Grand Prix, the race would still go ahead but without the FISA teams and would not count towards the F1 championship. The race would prove to be a very entertaining one, with changing conditions leading to drivers trying out all sorts of strategies. The race would be won by eventual championship runner-up Carlos Reutemann after the Argentinian made the gamble to start on slicks. 1981 champion Nelson Piquet would finish second followed by the Lotus of Elio de Angelis. If this South African Grand Prix was declared part of the championship ship it would dramatically change the outcome of the season. Carlos Reutemann would become the 1981 world champion instead of Piquet, making him the second Argentinian to win the world championship after Juan Manuel Fangio, and Reutemann would probably be a lot more well-remembered had it been for this championship win as well. Outside of the top two, the rest of the field finishes roughly in the same place in the final standings. Finally we have the 1983 race of champions at Brands Hatch. The only true non-championship race of the 80s. The race of champions was seen as one of the most prestigious non-championship races in Formula 1 and was seen as an all-star race. 
Previous winners included Gilles Villeneuve, Emerson Fittipaldi and Jackie Stewart. The race of champions had not been held since 1979, and this was their attempt to revive it. However, it soon became clear that this was not going to be a success. Only 13 cars entered the event, with most teams opting to either enter only one car, or simply not enter at all, so that they could prepare for the next Grand Prix in France since a lot of the teams just didn't see any value in doing non-championship races anymore. It wasn't all bad though. Honda would make their F1 return at this race after not participating since the 1960s. This race would once again prove to be an entertaining event. In the closing laps of the race, Keke Rosberg would be chased down by future Indy 500 winner Danny Sullivan, who was on fresher tyres. Eventually, the Finn would take victory ahead of Sullivan with 1980 champion Alan Jones finishing third on his return to F1. This race would affect the championship the least out of all these races. None of the top drivers scored points, and race winner Keke Rosberg wouldn't even move up in the championship standings. The only major change in my opinion would be that Danny Sullivan would be less forgotten about. After 1983, there were no more traditional non-championship races. As F1 became increasingly more commercial and successful, non-championship races were seen as a waste of time and resources that could be used in the point-scoring races instead. The only non-championship events held after this was the Formula One Indoor Trophy, held in the late 80s and early 90s, but these events would also see minimal entries with only the smaller teams entering. According to the Auto Sprint magazine in Italy, there was a plan in 1990 to host a non-championship race at Donington Park, but this never happened. In 2017, Ross Braun did consider the idea of bringing back non-championship races in order to try out new race weekend formats such as sprint races and reverse grids, but this idea was also dropped. The last time F1 ever got close to having a non-championship race was in 2020, where some F1 personnel stated that if any team had to miss a race due to COVID, then no points should be awarded. Luckily this never needed to be implemented. So what do you think of non-championship races? Do you think they still have a place in Formula 1? Or should they be left in the history books? Let me know in the comments section down below and I will see you next time.